Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop and this relatively short video about trenching, how to make trenching cuts. And I'm going to show you three different ways. Now, this is the first of what I think will be some videos which have a single subject matter. So therefore, the title of the video tells you what's in it. And I've had a lot of people say, well, your workshop notes video is all very good, but how do I find out which one I need to look at in order to look up the whatever it is, process or tool or, or whatever. So I'm going to make some videos with a title which tells it all. And so it'll be a single subject a video that you can find more easily on my YouTube channel. Let's have a look at trenching. Now, as a matter of definition, um, I, I hope I've got this right. Uh, a dado will go across the grain and a groove would go along the grain. A rebate uh, doesn't go in the middle of a piece. It tends to be at the end or at the edge. And then we have trenching. And trenching can really cover almost all of it, really. But trenching tends to go across the grain, but it could go with the grain. I hope that's right. <laughs> oh, well, I'll wait for the comments. Now, I'm going to show you three ways of going about this. One will be with a mitre saw, and I've got the Festool Capix 120 here. Another will be with a track saw and a guide rail. And the other method will be with a router. Now, obviously, you can do these by hand using a saw and, a, and different types of planes and so on and so forth, or chisels. Uh, but I'm just going to use these three different tools to show you different ways of doing it. Now, on the capex, there's a little lever here, which engages the trenching mechanism. And once that's engaged, when I go down, it stops and can't be lowered any further. Now, a lot of mitre saws, when they're being used like this, uh, can give varying depths as one's doing the trenching because of the different pressure that the operator might exert on the saw at the end of its travel. Uh, and with the capex, this is no exception. You do need to try and get a nice regular rhythm when you're doing trenching so that you get a nice even depth of cut. Now there's something else to remember about doing trenching uh, with a mitre saw. Now I've got the saw set in the normal cutting position so it goes all the way through and the blade passes all the way past the rear fence. If I engage the trenching uh, stop there, when I go down now, and I go all the way to the back. Can you see that uh, the saw may well be cutting at its full depth here, but at the back it's not. And so therefore when you're doing trenching cuts with a mitre saw, you need to bring the stock forward a bit. Now in order to do that, I've got a piece of wood which I keep specially for this purpose. And uh, because I've got this little groove here, I can fix this uh, onto um, my saw, like so, tighten this up, and that's now held there, and that is almost up to where the saw blade comes down. And now when I do my trenching cut, the bottom of the saw will definitely pass all the way through to the back of the piece of wood where the trenching is going on. So here I have my piece of wood. It's been beaten up a bit. It's been used for other things. I'm going to mark uh, two uh, pencil marks on here, which will be the, the right and the left hand uh, limit of exploitation of my trench. And I'll arbitrarily set myself a depth of eight millimeters below this surface for my trench. So I'm all marked up. I've got my left and right limits of exploitation and my depth mark here. Now, the way I like to do this is to first of all get my depth right. I think that's probably fairly obvious. And in order to do that, I start where I know for sure I'm going to be too high and then take it from there. Now, the way I like to set up the depth is, although I've got a mark here, I'm also going to put one at the end to the same depth. And this is going to allow me to get the blade set slightly too high. Then I'm going to do a trial cut and work my way down to that line there. So I've got my piece at the back here. I've engaged the trenching stop. I'm going to now, first of all, not setting the machine in motion, but I'm going to work my way to just above that line with the saw blade. Now, 
Now if of course you've got a spare piece of wood you could actually do some trial cuts with that and get it perfect before you do anything with your actual piece. But I'm just demonstrating this to show that you don't need to actually go to that length. Now I've got my line here now. I'm slightly above it with the saw depth and I'm going to cut in the middle there and then get my depth right. And I can see I'm about a millimetre out so I'm going to adjust that by a fraction. And I don't know if you can see now that that is spot on. So having established that I could use the luxury of the lasers now and do the, the right and the left cuts. And with my pencil line I can see that I'm not quite there. So I'm going to go over a fraction. That's nicely on that line. And I'm going to do the other side now. over a tiny fraction and that's just cutting that line and now I can use the saw to cut out what's in between and there you have that first dado using that method now what happens if your piece of stock is so wide that the saw blade won't cut to the end well, you have to use a different method. You could use this method and then turn the piece around, but your piece of stock may be so wide that even turning it around means there might be a gap in the middle. Now, with the method using one's track saw cutting station or MFT3, we've got guide rail in place. I've got my piece of stock, which is already marked, and I've got the trench marks there. And in this case, I need to establish my depth of cut first. And you can do this by, first of all, establishing where the surface of the material is with the saw blade and adjusting the depth of cut accordingly. So that depth of cut is set so the saw blade is just touching the top of the material. Now I've got a choice now. I could either go down here by 8 millimeters on my uh, little gauge here which actually is very simple to do because that's on 7 so I just need to go to 15 uh, 7 from 15 is 8 millimeters so I'm all set now for an 8 millimeter depth of cut alternatively I could have my piece of stock over here with a pencil mark on the side and then check that that was at the right depth so two methods of setting the saw up for the cut and of course the other aspect of setting the saw up is the ability to do the left and right cuts. Well, uh, the left hand one is very easy because I just put my guide rail spot on that line and make a cut. Uh, the other one is slightly trickier. One needs to know the width of one saw blade and then aim off by that amount. And I can, generally speaking, do that by eye. So I'm all set up. I'm going to do the left hand cut first. I'm going to do the right hand cut. A slight smidgen over, tiny bit. And then the ones in between. And so there now is that other trenching cut done and stock that was too wide for the capex. Now when it comes to using the router there are several ways of doing it and I'm going to show you two of them. Uh, the first is you can use the fence in the normal way and you set it up with the cutter at the correct depth and then you do a cut so that you can cut the line on one side and then the other and if necessary do in between. Now it's important if you're pulling the router towards you and then when you do the next cut, it's going to be the same, that you start with the left-hand edge. Because once you've made that first trenching cut with the writer, you'll then be moving over to cut material, which is on the right of the writer. And remember that when you're cutting stuff 
on your right and you're moving the writer towards you, uh, then you travel in an anti-clockwise direction. So in other words, you travel with the writer coming towards you. If you're pushing the writer away from you to make your cuts, then you would start with the right-hand side of the trench and then do the next bit and the next bit and so on. And that way, again, uh, it follows the correct rule. If you're pushing it away from you, you're going clockwise. Anyway, that's the fencing option, and I'll actually do this cut in a minute using the fence. But there is another way, and that is to use the guide rail. I've got this sort of more or less set up here. This would need to be clamped in place or held in some way because it doesn't go under there far enough. But then you would have this attachment which runs freely on the guide rail, and we're then going to move this in the appropriate place our various cuts. I'll just check that that's in the right place. Obviously when one's doing the cuts using the guide rail, the actual uh, depth of cut is going to be different than if you were doing it using the fence. But you set it up in a similar way and I'll show you that now. Now I'm using a 10 millimeter cutter in here and uh, it's one of the professional ones and uh, I can easily do the whole 8mm depth of cut in, in one go with this cutter. In order to set the depth with the uh, writer sitting on the surface of the material, plunge down till it stops, and I find it quite useful now to lock this off at that point, and then release here, send that down, this is zeroed here, and I'm going to lift this up now so that I can see 8mm just there in the window. With that at the 8mm point I can lock that off. And so now when I do a plunge like so that's going to go down and just touch that and that's my 8mm cut being done. So that's that part of it. Now I just need to attach the fence. Now I've got this sitting over the edge of the bench here and the reason for that is simple. Uh, the fence here is slightly thicker than the thickness of this material I'm about to be pushing it against and so it wouldn't be sitting flat if this were completely on the table. Now I'm going to set this up now so that everything is in the right place for the first cut and you must remember that uh, I'm going to be pulling this towards me, so the first cut is going to be on what is my left-hand side as I look at it. I'm going to do that cut, which will be a single trenching cut. Then my second cut will be over on that side, and I'll be cutting material from this side. And as the writer is cutting material which is on its right, you go round in an anti-clockwise direction or towards you if you're in the position that I'm in now. So I'm just going to set this up. Everything's set up. I've got my depth of cut ready to go as soon as I plunge. Uh, my fence is tight and I'm doing the left hand side here. So let's give it a go. So that was my first cut up to that line. I've now just got to take the extra little bit off on the other side. I'm going to disconnect the power cord at this point because I'm actually going to touch the cutter to get it in the right position so that I can move this over just by a little bit. That's fine. Plug this back in again and I'm now ready to do the second pass. So I'm cutting the material on my right and I'm cutting towards me. And there we have that other trench done. So there we have three different ways of going about trenching. You can use your mitre saw up to a certain uh, width of wood. And then beyond that, you can either use your track saw, uh, either with the track saw cutting station or the MFT3. Or finally, you can use a router. Now at this point, let me tell you that the OF1010 router I've just used is my go-to router. It's got a quarter inch chuck in there. It will take an eight millimeter chuck as well, but I've standardized most of my cutting with that machine 
on a quarter inch and all my uh, professional trend cutters are a quarter inch uh, shanked. And at my track saw cutting station that was made with the path guide system and so that was going to be nice and super accurate. And of course my lovely capex saw over there uh, which has done 10 or is it now 11? I've lost count how many years. Absolutely brilliant faultless service. Had the blade sharpened a few times so of course. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye. <music>